Hello everyone, my name is Jennifer Stay. This is Coloring Bliss. I have little Rose here with me today because we are going to talk about the five most important things that every colorist needs. I've been coloring for over a decade now and teaching here on our YouTube channel and over on our website. And during that time, I've had a lot of time to think about what the most important things are for colorists. So I've kind of condensed it down to the five most important things. And I think you're going to be surprised by number five. So make sure you hang in for that one. All right, let's get started with number one. All right, the number one most important thing that you need as a colorist is art to color and not just any art. I want you to have art that inspires you. After all, coloring is a collaboration between you and the illustrator. So I have here in front of me a few books that I really like and that inspires me. In fact, I think Steve bought this book. This one inspired Steve. Yeah. It was all with mandalas <clears throat> and animals and creatures in it. Yeah, the details of that were just really cool too. Yeah. And then this is one that I re recently purchased, a Joanna Basford. She is a very inspiring illustrator and has beautiful art to color. And of course I have to include our coloring books because they, these, have, especially the Chibi Bliss, have been really inspiring me lately and I've been spending a lot of time in this coloring book. So that's what I would recommend is make sure you have coloring that inspires you because in the end you're not going to want to pick up a colored pencil to color if you're just not excited about the art that you're coloring. So that is tip number one. All right, the second thing that every colorist needs to be a successful colorist is very good light. We're talking about light that is not like too yellow or too blue. We need a light that is color balanced and natural so that you can see all your colors and pick what you want to color and make those color matches very confidently. Now, one of the best sources for that good light is our big, beautiful sunshine. So if you have a window right next to where you work, then open it up, get those blinds back, get the curtains back and let that light come in. Now, Steve, you were just saying a north facing window is actually the most ideal. Yeah. Yeah, because then the sunshine isn't coming through and creating harsh shadows. It just create, creates this beautiful ambient daylight. Okay. We work really hard to get our lighting just right here in the office, and we have what we call daylight balance lighting right above me. And you can actually go to your local Lowe's or Home Depot, a hardware store, and look for a light bulb that is daylight balanced. And then you can stick it into any lamp that you have there that you're working with, and you'll be good to go. One of the brands that I really like is Ott. O-T-T, -T, they're Ott lights. And they make a really good quality light that is light balanced or color balanced so that it casts just a perfect lighting onto your work. Now, one more bonus tip for you about light. If you do buy a little lamp like this, I really highly recommend it because you can move it around. So for instance, if I'm sitting here coloring, and I have my Ott light on and it's over here, then the light shines down and it will cast a shadow from my hand onto my paper. And that can be really frustrating to have a shadow constantly in your way while you're coloring. So it would be better to switch my Ott light around to this side so that the light casts down and doesn't create a shadow. But that's up to you if you're right-handed or left-handed. That's where these cute little lamps come in really handy because you can set it just in the right position and make your lighting optimal. All right, we're on number three, the third most important thing that we think you need to be a good colorist. That is a color wheel. Now I'm going to specifically recommend this color wheel right here because it is just chock full of information. It helps you pick color schemes. On the back, it can help you choose light, mediums, and darks of every color on the color wheel. And it can show you what happens when you add certain colors to other colors. It's a lot of information all packed into one very inexpensive color wheel. In fact, they have a small version as well. I prefer the big one because my eyes need all that extra room because it's 
they're getting old <laughs> but I love this color wheel now don't be afraid if you're not into color theory and you haven't learned what tertiary colors are and and what complementary colors are and what they do that's okay all that information is tucked away into this little color wheel and eventually as you're learning your skill here with coloring you can broaden your knowledge of color theory and this little color wheel will be right there to help you I'll put a link to it in the video description number four this is the fourth thing that I think every colorist needs and that is really good paper I want you to have your illustrations printed on ideal paper so that you can get the most beautiful blends and the best results with your coloring now the other thing to keep in mind is not just the kind of paper but whether you have your illustrations printed on one side or two if you look at this Joanna Basford book her paper is very nice it's a heavier cardstock type paper and it's white and brilliant and ready for you to color but as you can see it's printed on both sides of the paper which can be problematic if you start coloring with say an alcohol marker and it bleeds through and then you have ghosting or shadowing of those colors on the other side now some books are printed on one side like this one that Steve likes has a blank side uh, behind every single piece of art and that makes it so you don't have to worry about ghosting you sh still should put some sort of piece of paper or something between the layers just in case that ink does bleed through I don't want you to ruin the next piece of art and be frustrated now there's also different kinds of paper out there different textures and different effects that you can get off of these papers. For instance, this book of ours here at Coloring Bliss was printed on the mixed media paper, which is fantastic for all different kinds of art, color pencils, markers, gel pens, they all perform really well on this particular paper. Plus we only print it on one side and we bind on the top so that whether you're left or right handed, you can work in this book very comfortably. Now, does paper really matter all that much? It really does. Matching up the right art tool with the right paper will make your experience with coloring so much more pleasant. And we have an entire video dedicated to paper that I'm going to link in the video description. But needless to say right now, I want you to think about the paper that you're using because if you're having trouble, if you're struggling with coloring, sometimes the problem is simply the paper. It's not you, it's your paper. So that's why this is so important and every colorist needs to have good paper. All right, we're on to number five, the one that I don't think anyone would guess. <laughs> number five is that you as an artist needs patience and kindness towards yourself. Did you guess I would say that? <laughs> I bet you didn't guess that. Now, as a colorist and an artist, you have to think of art as a spectrum, and we all lie on that art spectrum in different places. Some people are way ahead of us. Sometimes we're way back here at the beginning of our art career, but art is a huge spectrum and you have lots of things to learn and time to do it. So I want you to be patient as you're learning your coloring skills and kind to yourself because you are not as good as some of those colorists you're going to see in the Facebook groups. I am not as good as a lot of those colorists because we're all on that spectrum and having our own journey with art. Now, if you'd like to also learn some things to help you with your personalized journey, I recommend you check out a little quiz that we have where you can take a quiz and find out what type of colorist you are. Are you an introverted colorist or maybe you're a therapeutic colorist? That quiz will help you understand what you're trying to get out of your art journey. And then there's a 12 page download that comes after that quiz that has all kinds of great information in it on how to get the most out of the type of colorist you are. This will help with your patience and your kindness towards yourself as you're on your art journey. There's even a really cute coloring page that comes along with it so you can enjoy the cute little imagery and color them up. It's a really great download and I highly recommend it. So be kind to yourself and be patient. Now any good list is not complete until you have a bonus item. So this is the sixth item that I think every colorist needs. 
and I really love it. <laughs> In fact, sometimes I think I spend more time doing this than actually coloring because I love it so much. I think you do. And that is swatching. Swatching is when we take our coloring supplies and we put them down onto a certain kind of chart so that we can quickly reference it and see it as a whole. And it's very helpful as you're coloring and choosing colors to have all your coloring tools swatched out in front of you so you can make those good color matches and color combinations. It also helps you understand if you're frustrated with a certain set of tools. Sometimes when you swatch them out, you'll see, oh, it's because they only have a couple yellows or maybe they don't have enough blues for the kind of coloring I like to do. So swatching helps us keep our collection of coloring supplies organized and easily referenced. And here at Coloring Bliss, we have a ton of free swatch charts for you that you can follow the link in the video description and download and get yourself organized. Or you can order a book like this one from us with beautiful paper. It's all put together and ready for you to go. We also even have brand specific swatching pages. So if you own like the Polychromos or the Prismacolors, we can help you swatch that. All right, so that is my five things that every colorist needs, including one bonus. So let's review really quick. First, you need art that inspires so that you'll actually want to color. Second, you need good light so that you can be confident with your color choices and the way things are turning out on your coloring page. Third, you need a color wheel to help you pick color schemes and understand how colors work together and associate with each other so that you can make beautiful colorings on your pages. Fourth, you need good paper because paper really does matter. Fifth, you need patience and kindness towards yourself as you're on that art spectrum and your journey of learning how to be a colorist. And of course, my bonus item on our list is swatching charts because an organized colorist is a happy colorist. <laughs> At least that is the way it is in my world. I hope you enjoyed these five things with a bonus that will help you become the best colorist possible. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful, colorful, blissful day. Bye-bye, everyone. What do you want? Do you need another treat? Yeah, you did a little hug tilt. And one little treat is not enough. All right. Okay, can we film the video now? Yeah?